Hi, my name is Amy. I've been refinishing furniture since 2016, and here at Flip It Furniture, I share everything I've learned along the way about painting furniture. Are you like me and you get anxiety anytime you have to apply a top coat or a sealer? You spend a week or two repairing, priming, prepping, painting, doing all this to furniture just to add the top coat and then it's all ruined. I think it's safe to say we've all been there. Here's the thing, when you're just beginning, you think, oh, I must be doing something wrong or, oh, what do they know that I don't know? Why is this happening to me and not everybody else? Well, here's the thing, it's like a shot in the dark. Sometimes it comes out perfect and sometimes it just doesn't. I've talked to so many people over the years about how they apply their sealers or top coats. A few people have said to me things like, well, you gotta go to the car shop and you gotta get a car sponge and then you gotta cut it up, put it in a nylon, um, dip it in a little bit of water, do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. <laughs> I swear it shouldn't be this complicated. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you do, it just happens. Sealers are tricky. So if you have sealers anxiety like I do, then here's tip number one. Use a flat sheen. Before you click off on this, I swear it won't leave your piece feeling chalky. You can apply three, four, or even more coats and you'll start to notice after about two that you're gonna have this smooth finish. If you only apply one or two coats, it's gonna feel chalky. Anything after that, it starts to kind of build and it does have a much smoother feel to it. And I know what you're thinking now. Well, that's a lot of coats. That's a lot of product, that's a lot of work but it's really not. You can actually fly through the coats. And I mean, I hate to say like slap it on, I'm not saying to slap it on, but you don't have to be as particular with like, you know, if you were doing a satin coat with a brush, you have to be so careful and you have to like, you know, go in rows and make sure that the paint is evenly or the sealer is evenly distributed onto the piece and that, you know, you just, it's, you have to be so careful. With the flat coat, you really don't. You just kind of apply it and then move on. So you can sort of fly through it, wait an hour, and then apply your second coat. Fly through that, wait an hour, apply your second coat. And to prove it, I even did this on a black piece. I applied four coats of my flat and I purposely like did a messy job. And I hate to say that, but I just wanted to show you guys that it doesn't have to be, you know, in a row, all perfect with the flat. Like if you're somebody who can't do that, I mean, you should do that because it's, it's just best practices. But if you're um, a beginner or you're having a hard time, you know, and you do sloppily, accidentally sloppily apply the top coat, it's okay. It's still gonna turn out pretty nice. Now you might be wondering, why wouldn't you just use furniture wax? Um, the only reason that I don't use furniture wax, I think it's a wonderful product. I think if I was doing a piece for F from my own home, I would totally do it with furniture wax, but I sell most of my pieces and furniture wax is not permanent. So even if, it, if you don't apply it for like, you could wait like two years for some of the waxes, you don't have to apply, it, but you still have to reapply it after two years to get that seal. Um, once I sell a piece, I don't want to think about it again. I want to know that that piece is going to hold up. It just gives me peace of mind. So I always use a water-based uh, polyurethane. Now, tip number two is to use a sprayer. I don't know what took me so long to get a sprayer. I, you know what? It was probably the price. It's over $100. So that definitely was like, eh, I don't want to be bothered. And maybe because I never used it and I felt a little intimidated. Um, so both, both the price and intimidation. That's why I didn't get one. But I have to say, so worth it, like 110%. I would not lie to you guys. I tell you everything that I've learned along my way, even if it's bad. I tell you my mistakes. I try to be very honest in this channel and the paint sprayer for the sealer is the way to go. <laughs> you will probably never, or maybe very rarely, you'll see me use a paintbrush to apply my sealer. I just won't do it. There's no point. You get such a beautiful finish with the paint sprayer. I usually apply three to four coats. I, I usually use satin. Um, it just comes out so beautiful. And I, 
I feel like it even gives better protection than with the brush. Like when I'm selling a piece that I sprayed, I just feel so confident that it's totally sealed. I will say that the sprayers, the sprayer does take some time if you never used it to get used to. So practice on some cardboard beforehand and practice, practice, practice. Um, the problem that I was having when I first started was it kept like sputtering and clogging and I used the Home Right Super Finish Max. Um, that's the one I bought. And thinking that the grass is always greener on the other side, I actually messaged on Instagram, I, I, I direct messaged Wagner. And I was like, you know, I have this Home Right, like it was a crappy thing, you know. And I'm like, um, do you think one of yours would be better? This one's clogging and sputtering. And I just, I, I think I bought garbage. And they were like, actually Home Right is our sister company. And all the parts and stuff, they're very, they're like the same. So I was like kind of embarrassed, but not. They were super awesome. Um, they gave me some tips. So it, the grass was not greener. Either one you get, I think you're gonna have the same issues. You just have to figure out how to use them. So they were telling me that when the tip gets really hot, the paint starts to dry, which makes sense, or even the sealer starts to dry and get hard. So then it's almost like covering the little hole. So just keep a rag by you and, you know, every once in a while, um, wipe it. That's helped so much. And then in between coats, if I wipe it, and then I'll leave it sit there, but sometimes it gets, that little hole gets clogged. So I have a toothpick and I just, boop, I just, Pick that little clog out and I'm back to work. So keep that in mind if you buy one or if you're having trouble and you're like, what is going on? That's what's going on. <laughs> they were so helpful in letting me know that. I've never had an issue since and I'm obsessed with the sprayer. I even spray my clear coat indoors. Um, you know, you just lay something down and you can adjust how much comes out of the sprayer. So if you want it to be like super wide, I would definitely go outside. But if you're painting, if you're sealing inside, put your mask on, open your windows, and make sure that you adjust that nozzle. I think I go like, I start at the bottom and then I go seven clicks up, and that's right for me. It only comes out like this much. So then it's not like spraying all over my house. It's very controlled. So I love that. Um, just mess around with your sprayer, practice, practice, watch some videos. Uh, this that what I just said should be super helpful. <laughs> and if it was, I would love it if you hit that like button. And that's it. So those are my two top tips. If you enjoyed this video, yeah, I'd love it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. And I will see you next time. Bye.